Today, I'll be speaking on uh, Tiva Code technology. That's anti cooking solutions for the fire heaters. And uh, here is the, the, the agenda that I'm going to take you through. I'm going to take you briefly through the parent company Tuba says. Then I'm going to explain you the Tuba code concept, how the technology works. Some of the product characteristic characterization. There are many properties of this technology that uh, one must understand to see how this technology works. Then I'm going to take you uh, through a uh, coke deposition in fire heater tubes, whether it's a vacuum distillation unit or a whiz breaker or a delayed coker. Then I'm going to present you a chemical inertness study and a coking resistance study that we did with the European University. And we'll have some very interesting results on the coke formation, coke deposition, uh, and the uh, side reactions that make the coke. And, and then I will take you through some applications uh, and case studies, which uh, some of them already been implemented, some are in the pipeline, and some are yet to be implemented. And on and top of that, then I'm going to give you one more case study on the uh, commercial application we have for the anti-corrosion and on a conclusion. So I think I will take maybe 30 to 40 minutes. And at the end of that, as Becky said, we're going to have a Q&A. So can we have the next slide, please? So just briefly on the Tuba says it's a global leading supplier of seamless stainless steel and high nickel alloy tubes, has a presence around the world, uh, 15 manufacturing sites, uh, including Spain, which is a headquarter in Bilbao, USA, Austria, Italy, India, Thailand, Norway, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. And we do close to a billion dollar in sales and, and we do the entire uh, cycle chain from making our own steel uh, at our mills in Spain and extrusion, cold and hot finishing and uh, finished products, whether they are flanges or tubes, um, all the pipes and then master distribution in more than 30 countries and a commercial network. Uh, next slide, please. So now let me tell you a little bit about the Tiva code and the key advantages. So this Tiva code technology is a proprietary in-house developed and patented technology. Uh, we probably spent more than 10 years in developing this technology. And since we're the manufacturer of seamless stainless steel tubes, we brought this technology as a value added service for our customers. And this technology uh, is uh, automated in-house technology, has a complex multiple steps uh, to make this coating happen. So the first step is uh, called the surface preparation. Whatever the substrate, it might be a new tube or the old tube that goes into a heater furnace. It goes through a surface preparations which includes the sand blasting and the chemical treatment because the surface has to be very, very clean with the proper, proper roughness to prepare the, the coating. The second stage is uh, auto-controlled uh, coating process that is applied then on the surface uh, through automated process. And once that is done, then it is, uh, goes through an industrial scale furnace where we uh, vitrify it to bring the chemical bonding between the substrate and the tube. And with this uh, multiple complex procedure, then we get the tobacco technology and it brings out the properties that combines the silica ceramic based material along with multiple inorganic metal oxides such as uh, zirconium, zinc, sodium, uh, magnesium and other, other compounds, uh, fused enamel to give you the outstanding corrosion resistance in uh, different medias and thermal conditions, temperatures up to uh, 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, uh, sulfuric acid, uh, many uh, corrosive conditions. Also, it has a very high abrasion resistance. The hardness of coating is four times. 
So it's a very good for abrasion and erosion applications. Also because it's uh, uh, smooth and inert, it has a very good anti-fouling properties. So together, these properties combined uh, were able to provide a long-term reliable and competitive solution for the critical process equipments uh, in the refinery and petrochemical plants. Next slide, please. And so the critical applications we focus on, uh, of course, oil and gas, chemical industry, petrochemicals, power gen, but the equipment we work on are critically uh, are the furnaces, heat exchangers, boilers, tubular reactors, and condensers. This is where we employ this tubular technology, uh, and this coating can be internal coating or can be external, depending on the application, depending on the conditions, and also these coatings can be customized uh, working with our R&D and Technology Center in Spain. They hey, can Ron, be customized I, for different applications. I would propose to the team that we... Next, uh, next slide, please. I can, can you mute somebody who's on the background, please? So I'm going to take you through some key properties um, on this uh, Tivaco technology such as the morphological properties, uh, mechanical properties, chemical properties, and the thermal properties. So the audience here will have a feel for why these properties and how do they help in, in, in the good things it does against the corrosion, against the fouling, and against the coking. Next slide, please. So this coating is, is a continuous homogeneous layer managed through an automated process, as I said, and through a rheological suspension properties. In um, automatic control process, this uh, coating is 150 micron, 0 0.15 millimeter, and we're able to control the thickness across the length of the pipe uh, with the same thickness, uh, where we measure minimum uh, each and every uh, at the start, in the middle, and at the end and we get minimum, maximum, and average uh, thickness properties, and we're able to control the thickness in a very unique way. Next slide, please. So this particular slide is a very interesting, shows the roughness of these coated tubes. What you see on the screen is on my left, a substrate that's not coated. On my right, the same substrate that's coated, and if you look at the average thickness and the RZ, which is the highest point and the lowest point difference, uh, you would see a drop of about 97% from the uncoated tube to a coated tube. Initially, we bring you the surface of the coated tube that's uh, equivalent to a glass finish, a mirror finish, very smooth, and we know the smoother the surface, there is a less resistance to the flow. There is a less resistance for the particulates and metals compounds to deposit on the surface and begin the fouling process. So by having this rough surface, we're minimizing any tendency for the particulates uh, or any other matter to deposit and begin the, the fouling and the corrosion process. Next slide, please. How about the abrasion test? So what we have on the screen on my left is uh, is uh, is a uh, uncoated uh, tube, and at the bottom is the coated tube, and we do a abrasion resistance test, a standard ASTM test with the abrasometer, and after ten thousand cycles, when I compare the uncoated tube with the coated tube, we see about 94% decrease in the mass loss compared to uncoated tube. And that's quite significant. And that's coming from, again, the hardness of the coated tubes. And that's a very important property to have uh, for the critical process equipment. Next slide, please. This slide is another interesting uh, slide that uh, shows on the left side the load displacement curve. Uh, when you put a certain amount of load, how is the, the surface reacting? 
And when I look at the hardness of the coated tube, that is 840 Vickers number compared to 220 for the base material. So I'm able to bring a hardness four times higher than the base material. And, but it does come at a cost to pay. And that cost is on my right side. If you look at the elongation, uh, once you coat the tube, uh, you can elongate up to 1.5%. And beyond that point, uh, if you were to do physical bending or physical elongation, then the, the, there will be a damage to the coating. So there is a price to pay. If you have a U-tube or a bend tube, first thing is to bend the tube first, and then we do the coating. So that can be done, but it cannot be done the other way. And that's an important point to remember. Next slide, please. In any refinery or petrochemical process, you have startups and you have shutdowns. You have rapid heating and rapid cooling. Just like your online spalling in a dealer coker, or if you have a steam uh, air decoking, or if you have a pigging, but at least the first two, where you have a thermal shock, expansions and contractions, that's where this property comes in very handy. So what you see on the slide is, we take the thermal cycling up to 450 degrees Celsius, close to, uh, I would say 850, 900 degrees, uh, and then we do a rapid cooling, and we do many, many cycles over. On my right side, you see another chart where we take the temperature to from 1200 degrees Fahrenheit to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit in intervals, and then we do a rapid cooling to make sure that there is no damage to the coating or there is no de delamination, because that's exactly what happens in uh, online spalling. You have a contraction and expansion along with the steam heating and steam cooling. And the coating material expands and contracts accordingly, similar to substrate. So this property is very important. Next slide, please. Okay, as we all know, another important property is uh, any heat exchanger, any heat transfer media, the fouling is a very, very important factor very important discussion. Across the refinery or petrochemical plants, we have hundreds and thousands of heat exchangers and they all have fouling uh, issues uh, that happens due to the chemical reactions between the products or the precipitation, uh, corrosion. And so critical part is how do you minimize that fouling part? When you apply this uh, coated tube uh, inside the tube, what you see here is a deposition rate of the particulate matter uh, or the fouling matter will decrease because the tubes are chemically inert and they are very smooth like a glass finish. Also, the removal rate of this fouling material will increase because uh, it will not stick to the surface of the tube. And because of that, heat transfer loss, which you would have otherwise, will reduce significantly. And since you don't have that fouling and the heat transfer loss, uh, your fluid flow, the process throughput, will maintain at a steady, steady state, and that's an important characteristic of the Cuba code. Next slide, please. This is a study done by on the fouling rate, or rate of fouling by a major U.S. refinery over a period of seven months uh, using uh, crude oil, uh, heavier feedstock, and what you see on the screen here is uh, rate of fouling at a given velocity. The blue dots are for the baseline carbon steel tube, and the red dot, which was taken at a given velocity of 1.2 meter per second, you can see there is a significantly higher fouling avoidance of coated sample. And eventual deposition is not adhered to the surface because it's very easy to remove. And you can see a difference as much as uh, on the high side, four times the difference in the rate of fouling being reduced for the coated tubes. Next slide. This is just another example on the chemical properties. I just took uh, one example of uh, hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid, and over 2,000 hours, 10% uh, hydrochloric acid at 22 degrees, 
and sulfuric acid 30%, which is very corrosive. Uh, using the um, European uh, test in both conditions, uh, again, this Diva coat material holds very well. Uh, there are many, many more tests we've done with the molten salts, sodium hydroxide, uh, you name it, and uh, this holds very well uh, in most applications. Next slide, please. So in summary, uh, this uh, coating is uh, vitrified above uh, 1470 degrees Fahrenheit, about 800 degrees Celsius. And because of that vitrification, there is a chemical bonding and glass-like properties between the sub, uh, bonding between the substrate and the, and the coating material and the glass-like properties. And because of that, uh, uh, we're able to bring that uh, uh, coating in such a way that it has a very low roughness uh, and that helps you with the fouling and, and coking resistance. A chemical bonding that's created due to vitrification uh, and very strong chemical bond that gives a excellent corrosion resistance. The hardness is four times that gives you a very good abrasion resistance and erosion resistance. And then uh, I already said the chemical bonding gives us a window where you can operate these coatings close to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit or 1550 degrees Fahrenheit. And, and that's another one that works very well. Uh, and of course, as I explained, uh, this coating is an automated proprietary multi-step process. Uh, so it can be applied only in our factory and not at site. What we do at the site is small repair jobs, small welding jobs with the portable instruments. Otherwise, most of the work is done in our factory. Next slide, please. Now I'm going to explain you the coke deposition in fire heater tubes. Next slide. So I think most of your audience, you work in a refinery, uh, whether you work in a whiz breaker or a dealer coker or a crude unit or a vacuum unit. I think we know uh, we have this high conversion uh, process units that process uh, low value, heavy feedstocks, whether it's a gas oil or vacuum residue or atmospheric bottoms. And you try to go through a conversion unit to make uh, high value distillates or clean fuels. I'm showing a picture here of a Dillard coker. So besides the distillates, you also make uh, coke. Uh, and in the process, you're cracking, thermally cracking the feedstock and you're creating a coke that deposits in the radiant section of the furnace, and, uh, and that is a problem. Uh, next slide, please. So as you can see and look through the tube, as the coke layer grows, what happens is, of course, your heat transfer reduces, you have a tube skin temperature that goes up, you have hot spots, your effective heat transfer area is reduced, you have a pressure drop and you come to the point of end up run, either due to a high temperatures or due to a pressure drop. And what you have to do is shut down uh, or do online spalling, or you have to do steam air decoking, or, or you have to do uh, mechanical pigging. Next slide, please. And when you do that, of course, uh, there is a cost a reduction in throughput, huge conversion cost, uh, uh, maintenance cost, uh, safety cost, and all that is a dollar value. So now let me take you through a chemical inertness and coking resistance study that we did with the university in Europe to just explain you again some more properties on how this, how this technology of tuba coat works against the coking. Next slide, please. So the coking tubes have two things that works very well uh, for the heater tubes. Uh, one is uh, these coatings are chemically inert. So they begin with, they minimize the coke forming reaction. Second part is once you form the coke, does it stay in the coker uh, furnace tubes or does it move further to the coker drums? And it has this anti-fouling very smooth surface, anti-hearing surface that's, that allows 
minimum co-deposition. And because of these two properties, uh, you get significantly longer run length between the swallings or coking. Uh, since the surface is much cleaner, your fuel consumption is lower. And since you don't have that many spallings and piggings, uh, there is improved safety and reliability part. So uh, the advantages are very well explained. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this experiment was done with the European University where we took the chemical compound a dimethyl ether and we cracked and if we crack it properly it's equimolar cracking into uh, carbon monoxide hydrogen and methane and it won't generate any coke that's a thermal route but it doesn't happen in the real life you have many side reactions uh, boot rod reaction that breaks down the carbon monoxide to co2 and carbon methane decomposition, again, hydrogen and carbon. And this carbon is what you don't want in the furnace tubes. Next, next slide, please. So what we show in this particular slide is, and then uh, this experiment done at, uh, at the university in a furnace heater, uh, we have multiple cycles. What you see here is uh, one heater without the coating, other one with the coating, Cycle one, if you look at T10 conversion uh, for the non-coated tube, the temperature is 587 degrees. And then when you shut down that and start again, T10 starts 100 degrees earlier, which indicates you're promoting the carbon forming reaction because the metal surface takes an active part in promoting the carbon forming reaction. But when you do that with the same substrate, but the coated tube, on the cycle one and cycle two, what you see here is no difference in startup run T10 temperature, T50 and T90, almost identical, which proves that the coated tubes, which are chemically inert, they prevent forming a formation of or minimization of coke forming reaction uh, when you go through the multiple cycles uh, where the active metal does take a part in promoting carbon formation. Next slide. So this slide shows uh, carbon forming reaction. And uh, basically we just do the equation through which we know what is a carbon form. And again, what you see here is without coating and with coating, uh, there's a huge difference in the amount of carbon that you make a factor of um, uh, 10, 10 times lower carbon formation. Next slide, please. Then once you make the carbon, again, where does the carbon stay? Does it deposit on the tube surface or no? So what we do is in this experiment, we burn the carbon through oxidation process and we integrate CO, CO2 uh, chromatograph curves. Again, on the, the surface without coating, you can see the very high CO, CO2 curves and a significant period of time over 400 minutes, 360 minutes. But when you see it with the coating, there is no CO, CO2 curves and it goes away within 60 minutes. Reconfirming the carbon deposition is very, very low on the coated surface. Next slide. <clears throat> so in summary, the chemical inertness of coated surface avoids coking reactions. Uh, carbon formed is 10 times lower. And what are the carbon that's formed? Uh, carbon deposition of that carbon is 100 times lower. So significant improvement uh, both in carbon formation and carbon depositions with these coated tubes. Next slide. So now I think this, uh, I think I'm going to get to the real subject of the, the case studies. And as I said, some of them have been already implemented. Some are uh, already in the pipeline and some are yet to be implemented. So I have put together five or six case studies and uh, different examples. And now I'm gonna go through it. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so this one is a European refinery of whiz breaker, 15,000 barrels per day and uh, you can see the picture of the whiz breaker with the furnace and upstream heat exchanger. And uh, 
So they have a quite frequent shutdown for pigging. To be accurate, they do two piggings per year, and, and that is about eight days of shutdown. That's a significant loss of production. Then they have a preheat exchanger upstream of the furnace that is also taken out of the service due to coke accumulation and a poor heat transfer that gives you a higher fuel consumption. So they agreed to go with the tuba coat solutions, four inch dia, inner coatings, schedule 80, 317 stainless steel, and also the flanges and the bends. We supplied that. Next slide, please. So trial after nine months, now it's been 14 months, but this was done at the nine months. What we saw after nine months is a very thin coke layer, not even detected by the radiographic test, and in, in essence, 75% reduction in the coke deposition. And whatever the coke that was there was very, very easy to remove, three times lower the water pressure. You can just put some water and it will come out. And basically confirming that in commercial applications, uh, these coated tubes are able to help in minimizing uh, the pigging uh, or similar activities. And what we saw in the conclusion, uh, eight days of downtime or seven days of downtime throughput value was $1.1 million for this given unit and some other benefits such as uh, a reduction in the maintenance, a benefit of fuel consumption and heat exchanger cleaning, uh, altogether $1.5 million uh, per year. Uh, return on investment uh, much less than one year. Next slide. This one is a uh, delayed coker unit uh, in Asia. Uh, it's a one delayed coker with a capacity quite big. I think it's the second largest in this part of the world. 124,000 barrels a day. Has three furnaces, six passes. Each pass has 30 radiant tubes, uh, very common P9 material that's used in mostly many delayed cokers we see around the world. Next slide. So they have a frequent decoking as required due to coke buildup. Uh, one, because of the high pressure drop. Second is the high tube metal skin temperature. And they take out each furnace out for picking every three months and also online spalling every 30 to 45 days. And they do two passes per furnace and they have six passes per furnace. And during the pigging, their capacity is reduced to 70%. And during online spalling, their capacity is reduced to 93% uh, while they do the spalling. And with our modeling work, we work with the customer based on their information. Every time it's taken out for, uh, for service for pigging, the cost is over four days, 3.6 million every three months. And also when they do the online spalling, reduction in throughput, about $125,000 per cost uh, per furnace. So it's quite significant. We, next slide, please. So we did uh, Tiva Core Technology Solution modeling for the unit. And what we see here is, um, is the cost of the tube over a five year period. And when we say the cost, we include the cost of the tube uh, along with the coating, advanced coating to back coat, plus cost due to reduced throughput during decoking and cost due to higher fuel consumption. And by extending the run length without decoking by three times, uh, we're able to give them $10 million benefit, uh, benefit per year over five years is about $50 million if they were to do all the tubes and radiant section with the Tupaco technology. Just the online spalling, instead of 30 to 45 days, it would be uh, 90 to 100 days. And mechanical pigging, instead of every three months, it will be eight to nine months. And that's a significant value uh, for any refinery, any customer. Next slide, please. Now, everybody has questions, and I saw some questions in the chat room that does this coating work uh, with the online spalling or steamer decoking or mechanical pigging? So I just put a slide and that should answer many questions. So coating is designed to withstand online spalling because it's designed for high temperature, is designed for the thermal shock, 
and the coating has the same uh, coefficient of expansion, uh, thermal expansion uh, as it is for substrate. And as a substrate can change from P9 to 347H or anything else, we're able to customize the, uh, the thermal coefficient of expansion for each substrate. Second part is mechanical peaking. Of course, uh, our regular peaks, which are 82 uh, or 84 Rockwell C, they are a bit too hard for something like this uh, coating. So we have worked with the coking company and we have come up with the, the peak studs. Those are a little bit softer, 64 Rockwell C or 800 Vickers number, and they can do the mechanical peaking uh, without any damage to the coating surface and uh, they can be available to any customer uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, so we just modified that. And also remember, when we use these coating tubes, we're reducing uh, significant amount of inorganic contaminants, such as uh, the iron sulfide and the solid coke. So the mechanical pigging uh, requirement is significantly lower, but also the material you have in the tube that's coking is significantly lower for the inorganic, uh, inorganic uh, materials. That's another part. Next slide. This one is uh, another coker in Asia. Uh, again, a P9 9 chrome material, uh, 42,000 barrels per day unit. And they do spalling every 50 days, seven spalls per year. And every time they spall six days per spall, that's 42, uh, 42, uh, 42 days they run at 85% uh, throughput. If they were to run a tobacco technology, their 85% throughput will reduce from 36 days down to 12 days. They would have 24 days of savings at a full throughput value. And that's $3 million per year benefit just from the throughput. This project is in the pipeline in the budgeting phase and it will be implemented sometime uh, for Q 2021 or sometime in 2022 period uh, with this particular customer. Next, next slide please. This one is North American refinery and uh, West Coast America and their heater tube material is uh, 347H which can, which has a higher end of run temperature, maybe another 50 to 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit over the P9 material. So many companies now uh, prefer to go for 347H, uh, more expensive, but then it gives you um, higher end of run temperature and uh, that helps you on the, on the OPEX side. So this heater requires again, online spalling every two, three months and mechanical picking once per year and uh, it's a total of shutdown is for six days for pigging and throughput is reduced to 75 percent for spalling for 16 days and again potential savings of 2.5 million dollars the project was to be implemented uh, in march of 2020 and because of the covid 19 and the uh, oil scenario now this project is now been uh, moved to 2021 We'll keep you posted on the, the outcome of this trial as well. Next slide, please. This one is something we just did recently, uh, vacuum distillation unit furnace. This furnace outlet line had a severe coking problem. Again, it's a North American refinery where they have this outer line replacement uh, due to coking. Uh, these are eight, 10 inch and 12 inches uh, OD tubes and they have to replace them every year or every 13 to 14 months, frequent decoking operation and mechanical picking. A uh, lot of traces of uh, polythionic acid stress corrosion cacking. And we just supplied uh, these tubes. They would be installed very soon. Uh, best, best material is 317. Uh, L stainless steel, OD is eight inches. And uh, I think uh, working with the customer, validating the modeling work and feedback, we expect return on investment in less than 1.5 years. Again, I will keep you updated in our next presentation on the, on the future performance of this uh, unit. Next slide.
This one is um, rigid hydrocracker, again in North America. They have eight rigid hydrocrackers uh, feeding very heavy feed, uh, gas oil feed, and uh, they have close to 800 risers. Those are used for the proper feed distribution in the reactor. Temperature close to 750 degrees Fahrenheit, 130 bar pressure. <clears throat> and, and due to the velocity regimes uh, of the hydrocarbons, they have a severe fouling at the bottom section of hydrocracker risers. And once they have this uh, fouling and the cracking, that leads to the maldistribution and they're not getting the conversion they would desire. So with the coating, they will be able to minimize this uh, uh, erosion and uh, the fouling and expected to give a far better conversion. Uh, again, this project is uh, for 2021 due to COVID-19 and we'll keep you posted on the benefits that will come out of this trial as well. Next slide. Another uh, vacuum unit furnace in Europe has been running close to two years now without having to uh, decoke. Uh, we don't have any data other than it has not been out of the service. It has not been gone into decoking. Again, 317 stainless steel, OD is five inches, schedule 40. And you can see the tube surface. Trial is in progress now. Uh, it's close to two years. Next slide, please. So I'm going to take you through one more example of commercial example. Uh, I think I covered quite a bit of coking uh, issues in the dealer cokers with breakers and vacuum units. Now I'm going to take you through another corrosion issue uh, again with the refinery in North America where they have a huge corrosion problem and how they implemented the tobacco solution. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Okay, as you can see on the screens, uh, the flue gases in this recuperator heater in the coker calciner, extremely corrosive. I mean, you got, you got sulfur, you got bandits, and you have a very corrosive environment. Metal surface of 570 degrees Celsius, close to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and you can see the tubes uh, basically <laughs> can survive this environment. And that causes uh, chemical corrosion due to these bandits and sulfur. They have to plug the tubes and that's a huge efficiency loss and operation cost. And then they have to reduce the throughput in a cochal calciner. Their current material is TP310. Uh, they tried many, many other metals and alloys, nothing worked. And we happened to meet them in one of these conferences similar to what we're doing today with the Repcon. And they said, well, we tried everything, uh, nothing really worked. So let's try uh, the Tupaco technology. And let me show you what happened in the next slide. Next slide, please. So what you see here is uh, we supplied some nine TP310 tubes, uh, outer coated in this recuperator heater. And they were installed in May, 2015, now almost uh, uh, five years ago. And after 10 months, what you, when you see through a furnace window, what you see here is uncoated tubes are completely broken and blinded. You don't see them melted, whereas the tobacco tubes, all nine of them are fully visible, even after suffering the overheating at temperature close to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. So the light did so much that they decided to go for a full uh, commercial trial, full commercial run, which I will show you in the next slide. So they went with 800 tubes, TP310. And uh, as you can see, the two different colors, color schemes of the tobacco uh, technology, uh, it's not just because we like different colors, they were designed for different temperatures. As I said, we designed these tubes and customized these tubes coatings uh, for different applications, different conditions, uh, different temperatures. So some of the tubes you see were designed for 
700 to 750 degrees Celsius and some for another 20 degrees higher temperature. And they were installed in April 2017. Next slide. So what you see here is, um, again, when you look through a furnace window, a middle picture, what you see is a unique, consistent temperature profile across all the tubes. You don't see any tubes broken, melted, or plugged. Uh, full heat transfer, full throughput capacity they're utilizing. And they got close to uh, two years, three times the cycle length they would have otherwise. Savings of close to $2 million for this customer, which is a West Coast uh, big refiner in the, in the US. And, and again, they were very happy with this particular outcome. Uh, and we continue to work with them now as a regular supplier and multiple other applications. Next slide, please. So let me take you through a conclusion slide. <clears throat> Next slide on the conclusion, please. So in summary, I think I taken you through the properties of Tiva coat, uh, then case studies for the various units, including the corrosion. And in summary, what we see, whether it's a DCU, uh, vacuum unit, VDU or uh, razor hydrocrackers, uh, or any corrosion problems you have in any other unit, uh, Tiva coat is able to give you a longer run length improving overall throughput, and thus makes it very significant. Easier and much less frequent cleaning, uh, reducing the maintenance, uh, helping with the safety part, and that gives you a tremendous value. Cleaning, of course, uh, since the, the surface is cleaner, heat transfer is much more efficient. Uh, you have significantly reduced fuel consumption and uh, reduced carbon footprint on the environment. Reliable, as I said, uh, we de developed this technology over 10 year period. Uh, we're in the pipeline to do many, many uh, commercial applications and trials for different applications. We have an in-house R&D, uh, metallurgy, uh, huge department and technology department where we work with the customer problems, customer's data, and we work on the cooperation collaboration front. <clears throat> We're also working with number of licensors where they exclusively will use our technology for their heater technology uh, in a given uh, dealer coker unit. And uh, this coating can be applied to many metals, uh, metallurgy applications, whether it's a carbon steel, stainless steel or nickel alloy materials. And so in, in a sense, uh, uh, is, we call it a uh, disruptive innovation technology uh, when you compare with the conventional technology where you not only upgrade the metallurgy, you do the cladding, you do many, many more things and it still doesn't work. And uh, that's why we call it a uh, new frontier technology, uh, reliable so far what we've seen with what experience we have. Next slide, please. <clears throat> what I show you here is our brand new plant of the Tupacot technology, where, which we set up in uh, Cantabria, Spain. It's in northern Spain uh, near Bilbao. And that's where we make uh, and apply these advanced coating tubes. We can work with the uh, existing tubes, old tubes or the new tubes. We can source these tubes for you, or you can supply us the tubes. Uh, my email and number is on the screen. Uh, for me to re for you to reach me. I think this is my last slide. I'm going to conclude this presentation uh, with this last slide, and then I'm going to open the floors uh, for the next 20 minutes for the Q&A. So uh, thank you, Be Becky. Back to you. Mm -hmm.